Hey guys, Kim Garza here. Welcome to this new video in which I'm going to explain how to use in detail this SLR camera, Canon FTB QL. If you want to know a little bit more about this camera, go to my previous video in which I explain all the composition and a review of this camera. This video will focus in explain you how to use it in detail. First of all, uh, the lenses of the camera can be uh, different. So the lens that I have in this camera is a 50mm 1.4 and it's a Canon. So this is the composition of my lens, but maybe your camera will have another lens because um, these cameras can have uh, different lenses. So first of all, if you want to remove the lens, just locate this uh, red cir circle and then turn it to the other red circle and then just put it out. This is the lens that I have. It's pretty, pretty nice, I really like it. It's a 1.4, so the details are really nice. Okay, so to put it back, just put the circle again together with the other one and turn it. It's really simple. Be sure that you turn it correctly, otherwise you will have uh, issues when you are shooting. And with this lens, you will have the aperture in here so you can turn it. This is the indicator on which aperture are you using. This uh, uh, line, this orange line. So for example, I have aperture 4 there, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, 1.4. And this one is for uh, focus the image. As well, you can be, um, use the view, view finder and then you just focus the image. Okay. So this part is just to have the timer if you want to use a timer and in here you will have the turn on off and see for the light meter so you turn it on when you want to use it you turn it off when you don't want to use it this one is for the speed and if you want to change the ISO it's really important to change the ISO according with the film for example the film that I have here it's an ISO 100 so I have 100 here for example, if your film is 400, just pull this up, this part up, and then turn it, and you will see that this changed. So now it's 400, okay? Let's go back to 100. Okay, and this part is just to have lock and don't release the shooting, and the A, you can release the shooting. See? And in the L, you won't be able to release the shooting. This is really important. When you are not using your camera, just put the L because sometimes you can have an accident and just press this and then you will ruin a um, exposure. Um, this indicates the number of um, exposures that you already use and uh, this is just to, to uh, turn the field to the next exposure. We have one there and then the next exposure. And here you see. This camera also includes a light meter that will use a battery that will be in here. So if you turn this, you will see this is the battery. This is the battery that uses. And you just need to put it back. Uh, sometimes the battery is not working, so you need to check that the light meter is working. It's really easy, I will let you know how. The light meter is really easy to find if it is um, working or not. If you have it here in off, then check the light meter. The light meter you will see it in the viewfinder in this corner as you can see a little bit there the arrow and the circle there. So just check the arrow and when you turn it on, if the arrow moves, it means that it's working. See? When the arrow moves. So just checking, right now I have an aperture of 5.6 and a 60 of aperture, 1 divided by 60. Um, and it says that it's good, yeah it's good, maybe I can turn a little bit the aperture to have it more closely, like there, and it's just an 8, kind of like, yeah between 8 and 5.6 is correct ex the exposure. So as well, you can move the uh, speed. For example, if we want one divided by 125, then we need a um, smaller aperture 
of uh, between 4 and 5.6 as you can see now is correct is false and just a quick reminder about the light meter uh, the idea is to have like this this um, indicator in here the arrow I mean the line with the circle like the line in the middle of the circle that means that your exposure is correct which means that um, the combination with your film ISO and um, with your speed that you put like in here one uh, divided by 125 and the aperture that uh, combination will work and you will have a correct exposure which means you will have the correct light to shoot and have a good picture so just remember that it will be in here and just move the aperture or move the speed and it will work for example in here I move the aperture and it works but as well if I want an aperture of 2.8 then I need to move the speed in here and on below you have here if you wanted to put it in a tripod and in here you will see what is the purpose of this button in a few moments so the next step is to put the film so to open the camera you just need to pull this part and pull it up and that's it okay so now we need to put the film and to put the film you just need to have like this um, orientation and put it in here and now pull the film this is a broken film that's why it has kind of like scratches but I use them I use this film for the videos which is really useful so if you feel have this is it's not a good sign <laughs> this is broken you shouldn't have this okay so now be be sure that the, these holes are inside of this to locate it correctly and then you can close it just be sure that it's like this inside and close it and then you need to hear a click and that means that it's completely closed and then you can pull back this one and it's ready to shoot so as you see i got a few minutes ago the 14 now i have the s which means that now i have a new field when i pull this up this um, counter is reset so now the first uh, film is not working because as you see i pull it and that part is already exposed so now what you need to do is just uh, do a couple shoots like this and you need to do this until you get the zero so now that's the zero and you are ready to start shooting and he will mark one two three or 30, 36 exposure normally the films has uh, 36 exposures this is a film that i put inside it has 36 exposures iso 100 important that you know this because when you put the film you need to be sure that your iso in here it says 100 now it's ready and you need to have uh, your light meter on so you know how to uh, expose correctly your your film so now the camera is ready to shoot just remember that you need to put your iso you need to put the speed that you want like the iso will remind that like the same the entire film it would change just if you change your film and your film is not 100 and then you can play with your speed and your aperture and then just be sure that the line and the circle circle are in the same spot like this and you will have a correct one now I will show you quickly how to do double exposures with this camera I will do a video specifically uh, with double exposures with this camera but I just wanted to show you how to how to do it if you want to start now so um, let's put another exposure so you have already exposure here and you just take a picture and then you want to take another picture but the camera would, won't let you because it's programmed like that once you take one picture it doesn't let you to do another one but in this case we want to do a double exposure so what you need to do is use this button that you just need to press it like this and then pull this and then release it and now uh, what we did is to avoid th that the lever is going to uh, 
pull the film and then the same exposure remains in here with this one. So we do the next one and then we have a double exposure already. So we took two photos. And then when you want to move to the next one, just do it this like normally you did it. And basically that's how you uh, shoot double exposures. Now, uh, when you finish your film, imagine that you have here 36. Once you finish the, the film, then you want to roll it back. How you roll it back? We use again this button, just press it. And then we release this part, just this part, don't pull it out because you are going to, to ruin if you pull it out. You cannot open this yet. And do is roll it. Roll it and roll it. And when you feel like it's not pressure anymore, it means that it's ready to put it out. So you just do the same thing to open here, and now your film is ready to develop. basically you finish you have your film and uh, it's ready to develop and that's it you are ready to start shooting with this camera it's really easy I really like it it's a bit heavy but it's really nice and as well with this uh, lens it has a really nice results with the photos I really like it it's one of my favorite analog cameras you know, I love all my camera, analog cameras, but this is really practical and when I want to shoot analog and I don't have all the time in the world, I, ha I want this one because it has included the light meter and everything and it's a little bit easier to use. So that's it, you are ready to take photos with this camera, you already know everything about this camera. If you have any questions, don't hesitate and comment below if I didn't explain something or if you want to know a little bit more about this camera. I will do a uh, new video with this camera but it will be just for a shooting and showing results with this SLR. Um, I hope you like the video and actually can be useful for you. You know I love to share or my passion in photography and I will, uh, I will upload more videos about more analog cameras. You know I have like a big collection of analog cameras. And I will do three videos for all of those cameras. Uh, one is about the camera, as you can see in my previous video about this camera. The other one is like this, this one I can explain you how to use the camera. And the third one will be a shooting and results uh, showing with the, those cameras. So I hope you like it. And if you like it, don't forget to subscribe and share the video so everyone in uh, the world of photography or people that love photography can actually enjoy these videos too. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!